Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you again today. Welcome to Worship and the Word with us here at Church of the True Vine. And I pray that you are blessed as you join with us today, worshiping God, receiving a message from his word. And as we pray together today, we're going to be praying for the nation of India. We continue to pray for them. They're really going through a tough time with this COVID pandemic. The numbers are staggering and uh, they really need God to intervene. They really need God to move in that nation. So please join with us in a little while as we pray for the church in India and, uh, and for the nation of India. But please pray with us as well. We pray every week for uh, churches around the world that are being persecuted and different countries around the world where the church is being persecuted for being followers of Jesus Christ. Today we're going to be praying for the nation of Turkmenistan and uh, I'm simply going to read to you from the Open Doors World Watch List booklet what they have to say about the nation of Turkmenistan. It says this. Persecution of Christians in this repressive Islamic state comes largely from the government and society. The government imposes many restrictions on church life. Unregistered churches are highly susceptible to police raids, threats, arrests and fines. Even registered churches, such as Russian Orthodox churches, may have their services monitored. The printing or importing of Christian materials is also restricted. Believers who come from Muslim backgrounds experience intense pressure from families, friends and neighbours to deny their faith. It's tough to be a Christian in that nation so please join with us as we pray for our brothers and sisters in Turkmenistan but before we go on to worship the Lord I'm just going to read something from Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 17 and this is so important for Christians who are going through tough times and we've been through tough times in this nation in the last year we've had lockdown we've had everything that's been going on with COVID and so on but around the world people are facing situations they are struggling and this in the book of Habakkuk is a wonderful expression of faith and determination to praise in the face of everything that is going on he says this this is Habakkuk 3 beginning at verse 17 though the fig tree may not blossom nor fruit be on the vines though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food Though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make me walk on my high hills. It's a tremendous expression of faith that no matter what is going on in this world, our God is mighty, our God is faithful, our God is loving, our God will meet our needs. So let's praise him today. No matter what's going on, express your faith, give glory to God, praise him, worship him and receive every blessing that he has in store for you today. We're going to begin by singing a great song, Blessed Be Your Name. Let's sing to the Lord. Let's worship him together and exalt his holy name. Blessed be your name. God bless you.
Uh, can we just uh, say a prayer for uh, India and, uh, and, and the saints in Turkmenistan as well? So let's just turn to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we love you, we praise you, we honour you, Lord, and it's a privilege and an honour to be able to come into your presence, Lord, and bring our request to you. And Lord, we just want to lift up the saints in India and the whole of the nation of India, Lord. Lord, they're suffering terribly, Lord, with this disease. Lord, we just pray that you will undertake for them, Lord, that in your love and your mercy, Lord, that you'll help the poor, the needy, the sick, Lord. Lord, we pray especially for Pastor Sam and his family, Lord, that you'll heal any sickness in their family, Lord. Lord, that you'll increase their faith, strengthen them, Lord, physically and spiritually, Lord, I pray. And Lord, we pray for all the believers in India, that you'll strengthen them in difficult times. Lord, when they're being sidelined for their faith, Lord, when they're being persecuted for being different and for following you, Lord, I just pray that you'll undertake for them, provide for their physical needs, Lord, give them protection from, 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 from harsh words or, or physical abuse, Lord. I pray that you'll bless them, protect them, Lord, and provide for them, Lord, spiritually and physically. And Lord, I just pray also for the, for the persecuted Christians in Turkmenistan, Lord, that you'll undertake for them. Lord, you know their plight. You know exactly everyone by name, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you'll strengthen them, that you'll provide for their physical needs too. Give them protection, Lord. Let them dwell safely in their homes, Lord. Lord, I pray that you'll provide for them jobs, Lord, or, or financial needs, Lord, whatever they need. Lord, I just pray for their protection. In Jesus' name, Amen. Good morning. This morning I'll be reading from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple, that is called the beautiful gate, to ask alms of those entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms, and Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong, and leaping up he stood and began to walk, and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple, asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. This miracle of Peter and John healing the man born lame at the Gate Beautiful is a very, very significant miracle. Many people regard it as the first great miracle of the church age after Jesus has ascended to heaven and sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. We don't know for certain that it is the very first because it tells us just in the previous chapter that many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. So we don't know if this is the first, we don't know if this is um, the next one after these or whether this is one in the middle of those, but whatever, this is a significant miracle and it's the first miracle regarded as significant enough to be recorded specifically here in the book of Acts. God wanted this miracle recorded in the Bible. So what is it about this miracle that is so significant? Well, just take a look at verse 2. Acts chapter 3 and verse 2 says, A certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. This man is lame from his mother's womb. This man has never walked in his life. 
There is no motor memory that he can call back on to remind him how to walk. He has never learnt to walk. He is lame from his mother's womb. But then go down to verse 7. It says, And he, that's Peter, took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So we see there the miracle where the strength comes into his limbs. Everything physically is prepared for this man to be able to walk. But you would expect somebody who has received healing, who has never been able to walk, to have to then learn to walk. But look further on. Verse 8, it says, So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking leaping and praising God. This is somebody who has never learnt to walk, who has never in his entire life known what it is to walk, leaping up, walking, leaping and praising God. Well, why is this so significant? This is significant because if you turn back to Isaiah and chapter 35, this is a prophecy made hundreds of years before Jesus came. This Prophecy says this, this is Isaiah 35 and beginning at verse 5. It says, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For waters shall burst forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of jackals, where each lay, there shall be grass with reeds and rushes. This is a prophecy regarding the future glory of Israel. This is a messianic prophecy and yet we do not see this prophecy fulfilled in Jesus. We see this prophecy fulfilled in the church. The church is continuing the work that Jesus began. When Jesus came, he healed the sick. He cast out demons. He raised the dead. He did all of those things. But at the beginning of the book of Acts, Luke speaks of all that Jesus began to do and teach. That means Jesus is still doing it. And this is a sign to the Jewish people that Jesus is the Messiah and that Jesus has commissioned his church, that Jesus has commissioned those who believe in him to continue the work that he has begun. This is significant because it is a fulfillment of prophecy through the church, through the apostles on this day at the gate beautiful. The lame shall leap for joy and this man walks and leaps and praises God. This is wonderful. But I want to speak to you as well today about why this is so important for us. The thing about this man, he is a Jewish man. Normally he should have been allowed to go and worship in the temple. He was not unclean. He was not a Gentile, so that would not prevent him from entering into the temple. He was not a leper, so he was not excluded from society. Everything, according to the law of Moses, should have permitted this man to enter in to the temple to worship God. There was nothing in the Levitical law that said he could not enter in to the temple to worship God. What the Levitical law, the law that came through Moses, did exclude was that the blind and the lame should not become priests, but it didn't exclude them from the worship of God. But the tradition in Israel was that the blind and the lame were not allowed to enter in to the temple. And this comes from uh, the book of 2 Samuel, when David takes the city of Jerusalem, when he captures the city of Jerusalem, Samuel, so, sorry, 2 Samuel chapter 5, beginning at verse 8 says, 
David said on that day, whoever climbs up by way of the water shaft and defeats the Jebusites, the lame and the blind who are hated by David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Therefore they say, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. This was because the Jebusites had said, even the blind and the lame could keep you out of the city of Jerusalem. You're never going to be able to take it. But it was said that from that day, because they said that, that the blind and the lame were not permitted to enter into the house. And this had been continued on down through the centuries to the Pharisaical tradition, which said that they were excluded. And I'm going to read something to you from the Mishnah. The Mishnah is not Bible. The Mishnah is not uh, a holy text in that sense. This was written in the third century AD and it was written to preserve the tradition of the Pharisees that had been handed down by word of mouth through the centuries. And the Mishnah said this, all are subject to the command to appear before the Lord, excepting a deaf mute, an imbecile, a child, one of doubtful sex, women, slaves that have not been freed, a man that is lame or blind or sick or aged and one that cannot go up to Jerusalem on his feet. There was nothing in the law of Moses that excluded this man from entering in to the temple of God. And yet this tradition had been handed down through the centuries. This was not what God said. This was what man said. Man excluded particular people from entering in to the temple to worship God. But if you go to Matthew and chapter 21, we see something wonderful. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 12 says then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves and he said to them it is written my house shall be called a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Jesus is God. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus actually is the one who has the authority to say who can and cannot enter in to the temple. And Jesus calls the blind and the lame to himself in the temple. Jesus has no problem with the blind and the lame being in the temple. God has no problem with the blind and the lame being in the temple. They came to him in the temple and he healed them. He didn't kick them out. He didn't say you shouldn't be here. He didn't do anything like that. He healed them as they came to him in the temple. You know, many people have some very strange ideas about what would exclude them from coming into the presence of God. Most of those ideas have come from the traditions of men, from the opinions of men that have been handed down and that have got sort of hardened down through the centuries. Oh, you can't come in if you've done that. You can't come in if that's the sort of person you are. You cannot come to church if that's the sort of person you are. And people have accepted this for centuries. But let me tell you something, the blind and the lame came to Jesus in the temple. There was nothing in God's eyes that excluded them from entering in and worshipping him. Whoever you are, whatever is going on in your life, whatever you've done, whatever people have said to you, let me tell you something, you can come to Jesus in the temple as the blind and the lame came to him in the temple they were excluded only by the traditions of men not by the will of god jesus says come unto me all you who are weary and burdened and i will give you rest the word of god declares that whoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved jesus said whoever comes to me i will by no means cast out from my presence it's only the traditions of men. It's only what other people think 
or what maybe you've accepted of what people have said that has kept you out from the presence of God. You can come to Jesus in the temple. Don't be put off. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Be healed. If you need healing, there is nothing that would stop you coming to Jesus and receive your healing. Jesus healed all the sick who came to him. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Come to him and receive your healing. Come to him and receive freedom from bondage to addiction or from habits that have ruined your life. Come to Jesus and let the Son of God set you free today. There is nothing excluding you except the traditions of men and what you have accepted has excluding you. There is nothing that excludes you from the presence of God today because Jesus has made the way. When Jesus died on the cross, he bore all of our sin. He bore everything. That could exclude us from the presence of God. He bore all our sin. He bore all our sickness. He bore all our destruction. He took it all. He took all the punishment that our sin deserved. He took it all. And when he died, there was a mighty earthquake. And the veil of the temple, that was a great curtain that separated the Holy of Holies, the place of God's presence on earth. The veil of the temple separated the Holy of Holies from everything else. But the veil of the temple, when Jesus gave his life on the cross, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. That was God himself saying there is no exclusion. There is nothing that can keep you out of the presence of God. Come through Jesus. Come through the finished work of Jesus and you will know your healing. You will know your deliverance and you will know your sins forgiven and you will know that you can enter in to the very presence of God Almighty. But you know Jesus takes it even further than that. In the Levitical law, as we've already said, the blind, the lame, those who were crippled, those who were deformed, they were excluded from the priesthood. They were not allowed to come before God and bring the offerings. They were not, not allowed to fulfill those holy duties. They were, if you like, the creme de la creme in Israel. These were the ones who were allowed to approach God in the Holy of Holies. The high priest every year would enter the Holy of Holies. He had to come from the priesthood. The blind and the lame were excluded from serving before God as priests. But let's turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 6. Let's just turn there. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 6 says this. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. You see, we are not simply brought in to the place where we are able to worship God. We are able to serve God as kings and as priests. When Jesus saves, he saves from the uttermost to the guttermost. He does a complete work. He makes you not just somebody who can come and worship God. He makes you somebody who can enter in to the very presence of God himself. You can know your sins forgiven. You can know your body healed completely. You can be set completely free in an instant as you come to Jesus by faith. And call upon the name of the Lord to receive the salvation that only Jesus can give. Only Jesus can give you salvation because only Jesus died on the cross for you. Only Jesus shed his blood for you. And only Jesus has died and risen again from the dead. Jesus will save you today if you will call upon his name. And he will save you from the uttermost to the guttermost. He will make you one very, very special person in God's eyes, a king and a priest unto our God. But you have to come 
in faith. Going back to this miracle in Acts chapter 3. When people are wondering how on earth this happened, Peter, the apostle, says this to them. In verse 16 of Acts chapter 3, Peter says, And his name, that's the name of Jesus, through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know yes the faith which comes through him that's through Jesus has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all when you come to Jesus in faith believing that he can save you he will save you when you come to Jesus in faith believing that he can heal you, he will heal you. When you come to Jesus in faith, that he will set you free from bondage and addiction, he will set you free. But you come by faith. Faith is not something you generate by yourself, by the way. If you call upon God and say, Lord, I'm struggling to believe. I really want to believe this. Please help me to believe this. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 tells us that it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. If you will say to God, Lord, I don't know if I have the faith to believe. Please help me to believe. God promises to give you even the faith you need to believe in able to receive the grace, the salvation, the forgiveness that God is giving you today. If you will call upon him, if that's you today, don't hesitate. Don't wait a moment. Call on the name of Jesus. Simply say, Jesus, I need to be saved. I know that I've, I've excluded myself because I've listened to the traditions of men. Lord, I know I'm a sinner, but you call sinners to repent. And Lord, I repent today. I choose to turn away from sin. Lord, would you enable me today to enter into your presence? Lord, would you forgive me of my sin today? Would you wash me clean and make me fit for the kingdom of heaven that I would not be excluded from the presence of God any longer. If that's you today and you have called on the name of Jesus, then Jesus will hear that cry if you mean it from your heart. Jesus will have heard that cry and you will receive everlasting life, the gift of everlasting life that comes through Jesus Christ. If that's you today, and you have prayed that prayer or something like that prayer, if you have committed your life to Jesus Christ, then God bless you. I simply ask that you would get in touch and let us know that that is what you have done. Jesus said, if you will confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. So get in touch. Let us know that you have committed your life to Christ and that you want to follow him. And we will pray with you. We will pray for you. We will do everything we can to encourage you in this new life in Christ. And tell somebody that you know, tell a friend that you know who's a Christian or tell somebody, but tell somebody what you have done. Jesus called people publicly and he still does today. So make your faith public. Get hold of a Bible if you can. If you can't physically get hold of one, then you can get an app on an Android phone or an iPhone and you can get the Bible for you to read or to listen to on your phone. And lastly, find a church. Find a good church. Find a church that believes the Bible and preaches what the Bible says and they will pray with you. They will help you. If you're in the Clevedon area, then we would love to see you at Church of the True Vine. It would be great to be able to, to encourage you in this new life in Christ. So God bless you. We're back again next week at the same time, 10 o'clock UK time and every week at that time. So God bless you. We'll see you again very, very soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.